Here's how you can make a thumbnail like this, where the text is partially behind an object or subject. So first thing we want is an image of ourselves. Now, I don't usually take photos of myself. I usually get videos instead. And I frame it in a high frame rate, like 60 frames per second. And then I'll take a screenshot of this. So on Mac, it's Command Shift 4. And on Windows, you can use Snipping Tool, I believe. So if we just go like this, I'm not going to use this one because as you can see, there's a photo of me in the bottom right hand corner and it just ruins the image. But I've already got a shot previously and it looks like this. So you can imagine like it's the same process. Now, once that's there, we want to get the background out of the shot as well. And if you had Canva Pro, you just go edit image, remove background, but we're going to have a workaround around that. So what we're going to do, we're going to download this photo. It's now saved to our downloads. We're going to go to this website called remove.bg. And then we're going to upload that file. And we can just go under downloads and just drag and drop it here. And what this website will do is it will remove the background. Now, the only problem with this website is it doesn't do it to the highest of quality, but there's a workaround for that. And the workaround is using an image upscaler. So let's download this image. All right, let's say this is what we got and we're going to download it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to drag and drop that onto our Canva. Now we have two photos of ourselves, but notice how this one's not that clear. So anyways, the first thing we want to do, we want to expand this so it takes up the whole frame, the background one. Control zoom out on the scroll wheel and let's make it somewhat centered. That looks good to me. And then I'll try to make this the same size roughly. That looks pretty good. And then what I'll do, this front image, I can make this smaller so I can select the back one or the front one. I'll select the front one and I will enhance the image, image upscaler and we'll upscale image. So this is my workaround. So I'll just use remove.bg and then I will upscale the image. And this is what we will get. We'll click replace. It doesn't look perfect, but it's a lot better. So nice. And then what I like to do now, I like to add a gradient. So I go elements, I search up black gradient. Under graphics, I select this one. It's the wrong way around, so I just rotate it 180 degrees and then boom, boom. And now it's in front of both images. We want it only in front of the background. So if we go command left square bracket, there we go. And also another thing I like to do, I like to make the background a bit more blurry. So now it's hard to select the background. So why do I go position, layers, find the background one, edit image, blur, intensity, whatever you want, 50 say. Now it's more blurred. And now we can add, add text. So add text box, behind object, capital letters behind object. The font I use is Montserrat, Montserrat. And if we click this toggle, black, and then I italicize it as well. And then white color, and then we'll drag it to around here. And if we go command left square bracket or right click, layer, send backwards. And that's what we have right now. We can make it a bit higher. There we go. We can make myself slightly more left. And the way to do that is we have to select this one and this one. So if I hold if I click this and then hold command and click this, it will select both of them. And then I can now make both of them bigger and then drag it up. So it looks like that. Very nice. And then what else do I do? I usually add a glow. So edit image and then shadows. Not a glow, sorry. A drop. A drop shadow and then distance zero, color white. And then I use these settings and then I have to match it again. 
I got the two fingers to help me match it correctly, which is cool. Something like that looks good. All right, and then what else do I do? I will edit the image slightly, so edit image. And then I will adjust contrast up, usually. Vibrance, maybe slightly up. Sharpness, might leave it. I might go clarity down to account for the AI sharpening. And you just play around with it. And then that's pretty much it. What you can do, you can go effects, lift, add a little drop shadow on the text. If the drop shadow is not enough, sometimes I'd go control C, control V to double the drop shadow and then command left square bracket to send it back. Control C, control, control V, left square bracket, just to make the drop shadow a bit stronger. And another thing you can do if you don't like this background and you want something else, you can just delete this background. You can search something like black room TV. This is my favorite background currently. Go into photos, this one, make it big. And then edit image, blur, 70, command left square bracket until it goes all the way to the back. And yeah, that's how I create thumbnails like this. Thanks for watching. My name is Junius. I made a tutorial going more in depth in terms of YouTube thumbnails. So if you want to learn more about YouTube thumbnails, feel free to check out that video. It will be up top. I break down how pretty much every YouTube thumbnail is either a face plus context thumbnail, a evidence thumbnail, or a cinematic thumbnail. This is probably face plus context and and also evidence actually. So if you want to learn and study thumbnails, check that video out. I think it's one of my most valuable videos on the channel. And overall, my name is Junius. I help people make and strategize educational content. And I have playlists helping you do exactly that. So consider checking them out too. See you in the next one.